How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to review the uh, Voron AE4380 so we'll test her out, send her through the course and see how she does. I have to say it's a pretty damn nice truck It's uh, I've been wanting to do this, I wanted to just get the raised suspension first so anyway, engines, obviously I've got the top one, it makes the uh, power to weight pretty damn good uh, high range gearbox, uh, the, finally the raised suspension, I'll show you the difference it makes, it's not a whole lot of difference you can kind of see under the front arch where, like, well, yeah, how much it lives. It's not a whole lot. It's not like the White Western Star, but it obviously allows you to get the um, bigger tyres. I have to say, just while it's scrolling through this, there is a bit of an issue that once you raise the suspension and put the bigger tyres on it, that's making the steering even worse, and that's one of this truck's biggest problems is its slow steering. If you put the smaller version of the wheels on, it's better, it's still pretty slow responsive wise but it digs in a bit better and it seems to respond a little better but obviously I'm gonna do this um, review with the uh, bigger wheels on because it, that's what all the others have had, like it's a fully upgraded Voron that way for some people you might not even care about the steering if you in the low range gearbox going off road and it's probably not gonna make a whole lot of difference but for road travel and all that it, uh, it definitely does but like I say, I'm going to uh, keep it in with the big tyres, but I'll show you a little bit, just a little quick clip of the small tyres. Uh, but yeah, that's this truck's biggest problem really, is the uh, the steering is, yeah, pretty damn slow. So winch, I've got the top winch on, that was the spare wheel. As for add-ons, it can basically have every add-on. You can also have a crane and a saddle. Uh, the snorkels, they're, to be honest, they're not that much different, but that's the best of the two. As exhaust, I'd definitely say get the uh, stock exhaust. If you see through the chassis in the middle, you can see like the muffler. It smokes quite a lot, and even that one, even though the stack kicks it out to the side, it just when you're turning right, it's right where you want to look, and it's just, yeah, it's a bit of a smoky beast. Usual things on top, you can get aircon, beacon lights, like... Uh, sun visors, all the usual stuff. I think that one's just, yeah, fog lights, all the beacons and fog lights. As for the bumpers, to be honest, the stock one is actually the better one. Uh, I looked at all the others and like, I've lined it up with them boxes in the background. That one definitely sticks out more. Not loads, like, you could, if you have it, it's not going to be a killer. I don't really think that one was good. That one's pretty good. And that one's not too bad either, but I still think the stock one has it just and to be fair it has a pretty good angle overall like there's a few times you'll see where it doesn't catch its nose where quite a lot of others have done so yeah I'm gonna stick with the uh, stock bumper but I actually like the top one the last one that I looked at as for uh, rims there's only two lots I'm gonna stick the second one on and then yeah colors obviously I'll skip all the normal colors but the paint schemes that's the one it comes with really which is pretty nice like black and red uh, that's two-tone blue. Again, I quite like that. It's quite a nice blue. Uh, not too keen on that. I quite like that. Not as keen on that. I kept it as this because it's like the three different Vorons. I think everyone knows this is like the red one, really. Uh, yeah, let's have a little look at her. She uh, looks pretty good, I think. To be honest, it's basically someone was saying that it's like the same truck as the, like the B or C trucks or whatever on Mudrunner, which yeah, I can see it now when as soon as they said it, but. It didn't really dawn on me. So anyway, a little look inside. It's a bit more of a uh, cosy little cab. But you can see the view out the back's pretty damn nice. Which is good. Uh, yeah, inside, pretty old school looking dash. I was just looking on the roof like aircon. Oh, not aircon, but you know what I mean. Uh, my mirror's actually working out. It's pretty good in the update. So that's the uh, rear view one. And I can hardly tell <laughs> that one anyway. I won't get silly use out of them, but it's cool that they're there. Yeah, no uh, exhaust stack in the way. I could even see the tyres on the other side. As for the horn... It's a bit high... It's a bit high-pitched, <laughs> but it's got... Got some... Uh, yeah, it's not a bad horn, actually. There's the rev counter. Funnily enough, they seem to have removed the feature where when you rev, it centres your head. Which maybe just for it, to be honest, I'm I'm not asked that it's gone enough. I just thought it was a nice feature that they tried it, but maybe from feedback, people weren't impressed. Uh, as for trailers, you can have basically every one as long as obviously you got the right saddle on. 
so uh, yeah, no shortage of options on that. Takes off pretty nicely. It's a pretty damn quick truck, to be honest. It's definitely a bit of a rival to the uh, Royal. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's this truck's lack of grip, but most things go flying out there and skidding straight past. As for uh, dirt roads like this, I left it in auto just to see. It started dying down a bit here, but then I just stuck it in high. High, it just quite a nice speed in high, to be honest. But it's the steering. I've got used to this by now, but yeah, it really likes. So when you see me steering on this and you, it looks like I'm steering really late, I can assure you I'm not. It's like I'm steering a good half a second or a second before you see anything reacting on the screen. And uh, yeah, that's what it sort of feels like. But it nailed through that mud pretty damn well. I was in auto going up here as well. I thought I was in high, but either way, it definitely uh, has no trouble going up hills and all that sort of stuff. Put it in auto just down here. I genuinely, I didn't actually mean to hit that tree. And I was trying to steer left way up that hill, but it's so slow to react, it just followed the curve around and hit that tree. While I was there... I did want to hit these because I wanted to see how much they stop it. See, I couldn't even turn it enough to hit that third tree. Basically, it's got good power to weight, but so does the Royal apparently. But the Royal seemed to struggle with trees. This thing belts them down pretty decently. So it has got a lot of power. Like It's not lightness that is assisting those stats. It's definitely got some muscle to it. I don't think it's as powerful as the Tager, but I also do think it's a bit light, lighter than the Tager. But it's more on the Tager's level. Uh, through there, obviously, put it in high. With these sort of trucks, high gear through there, it ain't having it. And then auto, and eventually when you get along here, it usually goes in high. Motors through this bit, no problems. Quicker than, like, the Royal. Slow down a little bit on that one. As for suspension and damage in general, I suppose, like, considering it's pretty nippy, it's not taking silly amounts of damage. It's definitely not, like, beasty strong suspension like the Caterpillar and stuff, but, yeah, it's not glass suspension either. It's like, you take plenty of, like, wands here and there, but after all my driving around tonight, and I've been obviously banging out over rocks and all sorts, and it's, uh, I've never got to a point, really, where... Well, it's maybe flying off a cliff. <laughs> but anyway, this is a Black River River crossing. And I just cut the first bit out because it's always slow there for them all. Once you get to the middle, I was trying out between high, auto and low. It varies across this river. Some bits are better in auto, some are in low. It's been the same for just about every truck except stuff like the Cat. That just drives through at one speed and that's it really. Uh, yeah, it's not bad through here, but I'm going to cut. I think I've cut about 30 seconds out, so... Not ridiculous or anything, and I think it would actually be capable with a trailer. I took a little bit of damage hitting that. I just thought I'd leave that in quickly. So, flying out of Northport, into the snow test, in high gear. Snow, it was flying through there. Deep snow, it slows it down a bit. Going over that barrier, it did hit the fuel tank that time, but then this time, nothing. And uh, to be honest, it walks over them pretty damn easily. So, if you ever were, like... You know, you needed to keep your momentum and you've seen a barrier ahead. It is a reasonable thing with this. reason why I did this, if you remember with the Tega, I managed to do a 360 on this lake. That, I couldn't even turn out the way of that rock. And now, I'm, that's full lock I'm on. And then I put it in high and floor it. And even though it is sort of drifting round, like, the Tega would be doing, like, little donuts. Whereas this thing grips in the snow there. But basically, if there's a point where trucks either understeer or oversteer, and this is definitely understeer, whereas like the Tager would be more oversteer, and I definitely prefer oversteer. So this sort of little impromptu snow test. To be honest, very good. It's pretty damn decent in snow. In deep snow, it's better off in low. And it's not the quickest in low, but it's very comfortable. It's a very nice low gear. It's uh, definitely got plenty of torque and everything. But yeah, sometimes you're just better off, like I say, in a high range gearbox. The first gear auto is kind of like a high, high low. It's a bit stronger than high low. But yeah, that's what it's kind of my high low, really, instead of uh, And then I get to have the high range. 
Going up here was fine, it's very good at gripping on rocks as well. However, because of the bad steering, I couldn't take it round to the left because it just wouldn't react to it. And because of that, while I was coming off here, the bumper was fine, but I tipped. Now, if I was able to turn, I would have been able to line up where I normally drop off and that would have been fine. And it's silly little things like that, though, that will get you, like, when you're halfway in your gameplay and that. Anyway, cargo and turning turn. I actually... I turned a bit early before I set off. Normally I set off and then turn. And even though I'm going very slow as well, it only makes it by the skin of its teeth. I would say it's actually got like the turning circle of the P12. But like I say, I, uh, I turned a little bit early when I set off then. Here's a prime example though of what happens far too much. It's like just about everything else would have made that. Apart from the, west, uh, the twin steer. There, if the R didn't skid round, I probably would have gone wide enough to hit them trees and stuff. But I just got lucky, really, that the R send, the weight of the trailer, just flicked it round. Uh, through here again, low. It's not rapid, obviously, because it's low gear, but it's very comfortable. Like it never really feels like anything's a problem as long as you can drop it in low. But again, as you see, I'll sort of chop and change between uh, auto and low, and auto is just it's faster that's half the reason I use high range in these reviews as well like to me one mark of a good truck is how fast it can go through certain terrain so I may as well try and give it the high range and see how fast it can go through uh, next is the water test and <laughs> this I'm like a pinball I can't turn quick enough however it is very good through water I'm already turning right now I'm already full lock when I come out and that's the only way I made the corner I had to slow down to let it go back to here and already now I'm turning right and yeah and then because I had to let off I lose the revs in the high gear and it's just again little things like that that will just keep getting you uh, through here deep snow there pretty deep snow as well so uh, in low it's fine and then as soon as it gets a bit shallower but I like to go down here in high and I'm already pre-turning because I know this little course but I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't keep the steering up with how quick I was going through there, and I, and I was letting off as well. Again, the Tega would have flew through. So, uh, yeah, a bit of interior gameplay. I'll stick it in uh, low gear just while I'm looking around. I like the view out the rear. I can even see my rear tyres, so again, I can see what's happening with... Even if I wanted to do a mission purely third person, I can see what's going on. My mirrors, I can see the tyres. Pretty damn good view out there. As for the uh, bonnet and everything, it's uh, it's there, but it's not as high as the Tager, and the Tager has that hump in the bonnet as well. So, obviously the bottom left corner is always going to be useful with that kind of like nose sticking out. But it's definitely got a better, like, uh, vi the bonnet doesn't block the horizon hardly ever, unless you're going over the brow of a hill, like you'll see here for a second. But yeah, no, nowhere near as bad as a Tager. It's one of the better trucks, to be honest. It's pretty nice to drive interior view. Now I've got the mirrors. If I ever decide, just for the fun of it, to do a purely like interior view mission, I'd consider this just for the interior view alone and when you're looking around, what you can see. Uh, the nose didn't catch that. I know I caught the tyre, but forget that, because like, that's just like a bit of a crap angle. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt on that one. See, it's definitely not as good through mud as the Tega. The Tega basically smashed straight through here in high, and it only ran out of steam about here. However, it is very good through mud, but I think the Tega's uh, got it. Over this rock bridge, I had high hopes for it, and even here, it didn't clip its bumper, which we've not seen something not clip its bumper there for a little while. And uh, yeah, no problems here. I'll stick it in high now. The slow steering almost got me both ways out to fling it right to not go off left and then I nearly went off right as well but flies up that hill didn't even catch its nose there which is pretty good uh, I put it in low now and I was just testing it out again it just feels more punchy and urgent in auto really so that's personally what I'd prefer this snow changes between deep and shallow and depending it's better in either auto or high it will go in high in shallow snow. 
And again, I don't normally leave these in, but the last couple ones have actually done a pretty damn good job, and I was pretty impressed with how well this did. Definitely, if it had the uh, still didn't have sorry the raised suspension and the little tyres, it wouldn't have done well here. But funnily enough, even the P16 did better than that or quicker. But that is bloody good actually for this size truck and everything. That's up there, cutting across there, which a lot struggle with that. I was on my way. I had a pretty massive crash, but look, I've got like a lowered floor on. <laughs> I might have to go and earn a load of money and keep myself a lowered one now. I think it looks pretty damn good. But anyway. Got it fixed. Came back. Here's the uh, old mud pit. Or the devil's mud, <laughs> as someone called it. It, to be honest, it's a bit slow in here. Again, I think the Tega is definitely better in mud. However, it doesn't feel like it's struggling. It's just this is low gear and it's like it's going to take its a bit of time. But there's nice power going to the front wheels, not like with the Royal. The reason, by the way, I put it in auto every now and then. Sometimes when you're going in, if you like the nose is in deeper, you sort of drag your nose along and it's lifting the back wheels up. If you just stick it in auto and flick a bit of the loose mud out of the way and sink the back end in a bit, you usually find better grip and you balance the nose out. It doesn't always work, but it, I, I've noticed it a few times it's worked for me. So essentially, it now start, now I've got to the deeper stuff. Again, doesn't feel like it's struggling, it's just, it's in low, oh, I'm in auto at the minute, but I don't think it really, yeah, I think I was just seeing which, which is actually quicker. At this point, I'd say you're best off in auto because it's just less fuel and it's about the same speed. So anyway, I'll cut ahead. It was, yeah, slow progress, but it made it, as you see there. And I didn't use the winch or anything. See again, the Tega, everything would have got round there, no problem. I had to hit the rock, and then this tree. I'm already full lock, and I still clip that as well. And it's just little things like that where it, uh, yeah, it suffers. So anyway, on with the uh, mounting test. I have to say, it did pretty damn well up here, I think. It's about now where the uh, Derry Longhorn got stuck, so I think that's been the worst so far. Uh, yeah, no problem going up there. Every now and then it feels like a bit, it pauses to get its revs, but it ain't often and it's not bad and it's not struggling. It's just every now and then you catch it in the wrong gear and it's a bit slow to change. I was pretty impressed, like, this is pretty slippy rock. All the caterpillar, everything, couldn't stand these slippy rocks, whereas that actually drove up over it. The nose doesn't catch there, and it goes up. I apologise, tiny little glitch, but I was only just drove further up here. Did a uh, beach itself there. It's... One thing I will say, the truck sits quite low, even though, like, whether it's got the same size tyres as another truck seems to have quite compact suspension or whatever and it does sit low you'll see that become potentially a problem a little bit later I'll, uh, I'll show you something but all over here especially I'm pretty impressed with how little the nose catches and uh, this is normally like the rolling test basically this if they make it this far this is where I know it's pretty much gonna tip them so definitely not easy to go and it's not definitely not top heavy if that tree wasn't there, there's a possibility, but it's not bottom heavy like the Tega, but it's nowhere near as bad as the Royal. You'll see, um, I brought the Tega to rescue it. I mean, this, look, it's just bottom heavy. It just always wants to return to its wheels. And the only reason I was well I left this in is if you look at compared to them, like the uh, Voron, I keep wanting to call it a Veyron, is uh, got a much skinnier chassis basically. The Tega is a lot chunkier. It keeps doing this a lot recently as well, where instead of flipping it, you just drag stuff along. It's a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, going up here, this is like the White Western Star Hill, we'll call it, because that's what first did it. it. Does pretty bloody well. I can't knock it if I'm honest. It does start to slip to the side of it. It was funny how it seems to grip better on the bare rock than the snowy rock, which a lot of stuff. I would say is the opposite, but that could be the tyres. I'll do a video on tyres, to be honest, soon. I've been testing a few things around, and they need to change the, like, poor, average, good, excellent rate into something more specific, because I think they've put more detail into the statistics of the tyres than just what they're telling us, like, poor, average, etc. So you see there it rolled, got back to its wheels, and it stopped from carrying on rolling. So it's definitely 
decent. It's a lot nearer to the Tager than the Royal. And I was trying to steer out of that, but the steering's so slow. But again, it gets over to its wheels and doesn't carry on. So the cab feels pretty light, which is good because, again, it keeps the centre of gravity nice and low. So, yeah, in the mountains, pretty decent, to be fair. This is where you'll feel the problem. Like, I'm turning right way before I was even in that ditch. So then you get it out of the road. I'm turning left so I miss that telegraph pole. I was already turning right before I was even saying the word telegraph pole. It's like... I don't know. You'd have to try it. It's honestly... I know it. if you watch him because you can't see me steering, it just looks like I'm really slow at steering or I'm turning too late. But, yeah, it's not. You have to kind of... Like here's just a turning circle, not even close. But I did leave this bit in though. I would recommend using a semi-trailer over a like a four-slot towable because when you reverse, the uh, semi-trailer just gets out of the way. Trying to reverse a maintenance trailer is a pain in the ass because it you barely get any turning when you're reversing with a trailer like that. It did pretty impressive here. It got her uh, through that mud, stayed in the high, and went up the hill with the semi-trailer. But then I, I was heading to rift, and I suddenly remembered, like, oh yeah, shit, I'm supposed to be doing a uh, quarry bit. Now here, the Tager would make it down that road. This thing couldn't even make the gap in the trees. like, And it's little things like this. I'm sort of sorry to be repetitive about it, but that's how repetitive it is in the game. Every five minutes you're hitting something that it's like how the hell like I like there I was turning before that tree that's just gone off the left corner I was trying to go to the left of that tree not the right of it <laughs> not between the gap like it's so because it's very shallow steering it doesn't even bite into the ground all the time so sometimes you just have no steering and that's what happened there when I hit that tree this did impress me though this is very steep I cut it early and it didn't even catch the nose and went straight down there, which is pretty pretty decent, to be honest. All over here, it was, uh, yeah, not a problem. It even ran over one of those winchable trees, which sometimes can uh, catch you up a bit. So, standard issue. Two slabs. Still a very nice, comfortable truck. It doesn't, like, the White Western Star suddenly hated it. That's, funny enough, I think that's the trailer from the White Western Star. Up here, if you take it at a bit of a weird angle the first time, the trailer usually does lean like that, but once you actually get on the slope, it's not as bad. And uh, yeah, I mean, definitely better than stuff like the Royal. The thing you're about to see that's the problem, struggled a little bit here, but I'm, uh, again, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt because it got up first time. The legs of the semi-trailer like there that does happen where your nose comes off the ground however when I got here I thought oh I ran out of grip or whatever and basically the legs of that semi-trailer are digging into the brow of the hill basically and I don't think it's going to be a problem loads but obviously here it is a bit awkward and I just keep kind of revving it and pulling it over to the side and eventually there's like that little dip there but it definitely sits lower than the Tega. Funnily enough, the small tyres on this are 43 inch and they're 47 on the Tega. But big tyres are 50 on this and 51 on the Tega. But I still think overall this truck's chassis sits lower. And if, as you could see there with the legs, they were only like inches off the floor. So you could catch it. However, while I was here again, when in Rome, uh, I thought I'd try it and... I can't knock it because I don't think a lot's making it up this hill. And again, I'm in uh, the high range gearbox. This is just first gear auto. And at least it even got to here. However, once I got here, it lifts the front up, which it did with the Tager, it does with a lot of them. I can't steer now. And the legs are. Well, I winch myself around there, you'll see in a second there. The legs of the semi trailer now get caught which didn't happen with the Tager. And uh, to be fair, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but as you can see, there's no, there's no chance I'm getting up. So I'll have to uh, do this. But as part of the game, like those trees are basically there. So if you make it this far up, 
you can sort yourself out. Here, right, I promise, I was turning right way before. So now watch, I reverse, think, okay. Right, full lock before I even set off. And the thing just goes straight again, and it's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so then I try and go up there, and yeah, that's just little things like that. It never hits the spot that you're trying to aim for. It's just always a bit worse than it should be. Couldn't turn out the way of these loafs in time. Just note though, the loafs hurt the Vauron, <laughs> not the other way around, they didn't take any damage. Horse of a vehicle. As for speed test though, it's pretty damn rapid, like I say, you're about to see it uh, gets cooking. However, look at the wheels, I'm turning full lock. Takes what, three or four seconds just to get away from that edge? It's so, like, I can't drift it, actually, ironically, it goes well down the runway because it's easier to go straight than turn. And at this point, I think that flew pretty damn well. I was like, bloody hell, that's a contender for the Royal. Right, hang on. <laughs> Gives me an idea. We need to know these things. And I have to say, the Voron did a bloody good effort. But I think the uh, Royal is still the daddy of speed, just by a whisker. But it's close. So uh, I was coming back for a water test, but I forgot to break. <laughs> it's easy when you're out the garage, but when you're actually flying at the cliff at 90, it's I'm having too much fun. Um, brakes, yeah, um, <laughs> not amazing. You'd definitely be shitting your pants if you were heading towards that cliff. I thought this was worth leaving in. Right, this is why I always use the loaf, and I love the loaf, because coming down here to do, like, this water test, the amount of stuff that tips over is ridiculous, and to this credit, it made it... But that's why I bring the loaf, because the loaf makes it every goddamn time, and sometimes when I'm trying to get footage and I'm trying to get down with a brand-new engine... 5-0 game. Um, yeah, a trucks tip over. I can spend an extra hour just trying to get this footage of this little like drowning clip because I can't get a truck down there in one piece that doesn't tip over and then the rescue truck tips over and so on and so on. And then I bring the loaf and it just rescues everything. That's how uh, deep it can go. If the snorkel was at the back of the cab like in the ANK, it'd be able to go a bit better but it definitely isn't bad. Reversing out is bloody good. I think this is better than the Taiga in water, and I think the Taiga is better than this in mud. It'd be my general, like, this was very comfortable, even in pretty deep water, it was like reversed out at the same speed. So I'm going in for a uh, damage test, and funnily enough, you see the damage climbing up, because the deeper you go, the higher the damage goes, but now it starts sitting on 17, goes up a little, but I was like, oh, normally. It'd be up to like 40 odd by now, and then I notice that the front's floating. Which, because that's keeping the snorkel closer to the surface of the water, I'm only getting like 20 damage instead of 40, 50 or whatever it would take. So the engine lasts a long time, which is just a good thing. Like, uh, as you'll see in a minute, it gave me an idea at this point. I was like, yeah, I might be able to make it to that island if I brought a, a van body. So, that's what I tried, but again, I forgot to break. <laughs> Always got to try one. So uh, anyway, I came back, and again, to its credit, even with this van, the van body doesn't weigh a lot, but this actually got down twice in a row, and I don't think I've ever got down here twice in a row in anything except the loaf. <laughs> Whatever's in there, thank you. Probably a bloody loaf. Like bat loaf, innit? Or spider loaf, everyone gets one. It was there when I needed it. So anyway, I went for another drowning test because I wanted to see this floating situation. So as you can see, the damage is climbing, gets to 24, 26, but then now, it starts floating. And funnily enough, the deeper you go, the better it gets. <laughs> That's definitely what she said, but it is true. Like, look, as it goes deeper, the nose rises back out, and now it's not even taking any damage. And I can basically tiptoe along in some pretty damn deep water. And uh, as i got the van body, I think the van body might be helping, like, the situation. It's certainly helping me get far enough. However, I reckon I could get to that island. This attempt, I hit a rock or something underneath. It's pushed the nose back in, and I won't leave all the footage in. I kept repairing it, but I couldn't get off whatever I was stuck on. But generally, you could walk through deeper water than you'd think. This is just a tiny bit of gameplay. That's the little wheels, and they... It suffers. <laughs> Again, <laughs> no damage to the loaf. Nails the uh, fuel tank. Because it sits so low as it is, like, if you towed a semi-trailer with the non-raised suspension, I think you'd clip a lot of stuff with those legs. 
there's little tyres, there's big tyres. It still doesn't make a massive difference, but anyway, in conclusion, uh, I think it's a bloody good truck. For the money, it's definitely worth it. It's like 80 grand odd, I'll show you in a minute, but uh, that's stock. To do it up, you're probably talking 125 grand. Uh, yeah, I think it's not as good as the Tager in mud. Snow, they're ballpark area, they're all roughly the same. I think they're both decent. Uh, it's better in water than the Tega, but the Tega's like you're gonna see more mud than deep sea, so I would say its strength isn't as useful. However, yeah, it is better in water, it can go a little bit deeper, and it was uh, definitely had the muscle to reverse out of there. You can see between the pair of them, like the Tega's just a chunkier, meatier vehicle with them wheels that also help keep the weight, like the center of gravity, low. The chassis is also higher, which is why the legs of the semi-trailers don't catch as much. That's raised suspension and bigger tyres. So, yeah, it is a bit of a small vehicle, to be honest. And the steering, that's the biggest thing that's... For me, personally, I really don't like the steering. There it is, about 82 grand, which, for what you get, is bloody good. But it is basically a competitor to the Tager, and I do just think I'd rather the Tager... The Tager's got much quicker steering, the power's all the fine. Uh, yeah, about 125 grand fully upgraded. But that is cheaper than some, obviously, like the Tatrin, that's 160 grand and stuff. The uh, Yeah, so it is pretty decent value for money. If you prefer sitting in low range gearboxes and you're having, like, you like doing all that sort of stuff, this probably could be well up your street. Uh, personally, I'm obviously going to sell it and I'll try other Vorons. I'm going to keep doing reviews, so let us know what trucks you want and I'll bump them up the list, but I'll I'll do them in the order sort of I'm doing them, but yeah, I will mix and match, depending. So anyway, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon. And I'll just leave a couple of bits in. This is for anyone who wants a bit of a extra see what's going on. Basically, this is what happens every time I come down here to try and get a water uh, clip. All I'm doing now, this wasn't even supposed to be in this, this wasn't for footage, I was just trying to test the snorkel. And this is what happens every bloody time. And it's like, right, who are you going to call? Fucking loaf busters. So, this is why I take the loafs, <laughs> to rescue everything. I mean, look at it as like GTR launch control, and it's got James Bond smoke, so if you need to lose the 5-0. Like, no one can see where you've gone if you don't want them to. So yeah, this is why because it's like, oh no, it's rolled on its roof, what am I going to do? Oh no, it's done it again, but guess what? It landed on its tyres, like it does 99.9% .9 of every time I've ever used the thing, and then I can rescue my trucks. And funnily enough, because since the update, it feels like trucks aren't digging in as much, I just dragged this thing up and down the beach for five minutes, and I've also got the autonomous winch on this, so I just went and got a different loaf with a uh, stronger winch. But as you can see, I was moving the truck. Look, there was trucks behind me, not anymore. Not with James Bond smoke. Little beast. See, I don't even have to look where I'm going. This thing drives for me. It's like a Tesla, a Nissan GTR, and a horse all rolled into one. Well, probably a lot more things on top of it, to be honest. But anyway, at this point, I was like, fuck it, I ain't even going slow down there, like, let's just send it, because I know I'll get on my wheels, it'll be fine. Like, oh, minimal damage, nothing's broken, lands on its wheels, <laughs> and I can go and rescue my truck. And again, I'll cut a little bit out here, only because I dragged this thing up and down and up and down, I flipped it 180 and all sorts. Eventually, I dragged it over here, because I knew there was rocks in the water. Uh, yeah, it's had no trouble, I've dragged it over to that yellow thing, back over here, all sorts. It had no trouble dragging it, it just... Because the thing keeps trying to drive at me as well, that's not helping. But I caught the wheels on a rock, and there you go. And I'm pretty bloody neck deep in water, so it's not like I made it easy for myself. Turning circle, monster. Even here, I tried to just demonstrate kind of like, I'll tip it over and show you how easy it is to flick back. And I couldn't even tip the bloody thing. <laughs> I even tried towing it over with the other car, and it just kept spinning in circles. It would like, instead of turning over, it just turns. So eventually, though, I got it to go. And again, this is—I don't know if anyone else noticed, but I think trees break easier since the last update because I've winched this thing to a lot of the tiny trees, and it rarely breaks the tiny trees.
but here it's not bad like everything else doesn't even remotely stand a chance but eventually it hangs on to one of the tiny trees that are in there somewhere and I'm good to go so as a rescue vehicle it saves me time and just in case you think I got lucky two out of two Scandinavian flick minimal damage <laughs> lands on its wheels good to go so yeah that's three for three just to be safe Like complete nose or face plant, minimal damage, nothing's wrecked, but it probably stuck. Nope. Sits back on its wheels and it's off. That glitching. I will, I'll do a Hummer update tomorrow because there's finally been some more action. Uh, five out of five, give it a Scandinavian flick because why not? Eight. Eight engine damage, lands on its wheels, five out of five. And I'm off. Telling you, horse of a vehicle, get yourself a loaf. <laughs> get yourself five. I did. And anyway, I didn't have to do this. I tested the uh, snorkel on the Royal to see if it got changed, but it hasn't. And uh, But yeah, look, this thing just pulls it out of the water, no problem. So anyway, a little pose for a photo, thug loaf. I hope you've enjoyed, thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon.